Good morning. Technology is a wonderful thing. It works. A couple of announcements as we get started. Um, welcome uh, all of you to worship today. Uh, I will remind you, as I usually do, that things are not always like this, but that's okay. Uh, the pastor is off at annual conference. Uh, he and Doug Swissler are uh, helping make some decisions for uh, for our, our state conference and also plans ahead for the, uh, the, the four-year conference that they hold uh, internationally, uh, which will be next year. Um, you, you all will get a card. I invite you to, uh, to fill it out. If you're new, uh, we would appreciate knowing that um, you're a visitor. If you have a message for the pastor, he'll be back tomorrow. You can put it on this uh, and he'll get it. Uh, and if you have uh, any uh, prayer requests, uh, you can uh, add it to that also. Also in your bulletin, you'll notice that uh, there's uh, a, a handout called Peace with Justice. I invite you to uh, take a look at that and uh, decide. It's one of the six special Sunday collections that the uh, United Methodist Church makes. I'll talk about it later, but I thought I'd give you a heads up uh, to, uh, to study it ahead of time. So again, I welcome you on this wonderful um, weather day. Thank you for coming and uh, let us worship. Good morning. I just want to make a comment that Marilyn Cullinan um, arranges for the liturgists. Marilyn Cullinan called and asked me to be liturgist. Pastor Tim called and asked Herb to be the preacher separately. So this is not a family affair this morning. It's just by coincidence. So would you please rise for the call to worship. <clears throat> With glad and grateful hearts, let thanksgiving abound flowing from sea to shining sea, from mountains high to valleys low. Let the echo of praise resound, God, for our country, for peace. Let our prayers and praise ring forth through our worship and song. Our first hymn this morning in your hymnal is 696, and on the screen you know it well, America the Beautiful.
And please pray with me now. Almighty God, as a flag is blown in the wind, so we come today to let your spirit blow through our hearts and lives. Remind us that we are united not by blood, race, or nationality, but by love, a love that places the you and we above the I and me, a love so great it must originate from the source of all love. We, your people, O oh God, come seeking your love, a love more powerful than all our hurts, all our pain, a love that meets us where we are and calls us to more than we can imagine, a love that can change our lives forever. Amen. And now let us greet one another as a sign of God's peace. seated. Time for the children. Are there some kids that are willing to uh, come and help me do a little project? Good morning. Do any of you happen to know what, what special day this is in our country? Flag day. Flag day. And you weren't even prompted. Good job. I have a flag that uh, has some importance to me that I, I've had stored away for years. Uh, this was given to uh, my family when my, uh, my father passed away. And the reason they gave it to him, gave it to us, was because he was in, in, in the Army. So I think everybody should have a flag, don't you? I have a flag on, but I have a flag for everybody. And I want you guys to help me pass these out. So, so hand them out, and when you run out, come back. Give one to everybody. Thank you much.
Do we have enough? Well, you still have some extras, okay. Raise your hand if you haven't got a flag yet. Is that louder, Glenn? Evidently not, he didn't hear me. Patrick, can you make me louder? Then I'll have to talk louder. Is better? Okay. So did everybody get a flag? Yes. We'll wave the flags. Don't talk too loud. <laughs> That's not a problem. Thank you, Rick. Okay, let's try that one more time. Everybody wave your flag. We're going we're gonna to do it again later, so uh, I wanted you to practice. Thank you much. I'm not even much of a musician, and I'm impressed. Thank you. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is Psalm 20, um, a Psalm of David. It was written as a prayer for the king before he went into battle against a threatening force. May the Lord answer you when you are distressed. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift up the banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. O Lord, save the king, answer us when we call. And that is our Old Testament. The Gospel lesson, please rise. Gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 4. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. 
a man scattered seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Imagine my surprise when I opened the envelope and it wasn't an advertisement for a credit card, cable TV, or the newest diet plan. It was a letter from the U.S. flag and it reads as follows. Dear Herb, I understand you will be addressing your congregation on June 14th, Flag Day. I just wanted to share a thought with you and the people you worship with about the flag about your flag. Lately, I have become concerned about the people I represent. I no longer see the pride and excitement in their eyes that I once saw when I traveled down the streets in Veterans Day's parades and on the 4th of July. People used to salute me, remove their hats, and hold their hand over their hearts as I pass by. Now they just look around to see what others are doing. Could it be that they don't see me? That has to be the answer because I haven't changed. I am still the same flag that accompanied so many of our soldiers and sailors as they defended this great country. As I wave in the breeze, I am waving for each and every one of them. I represent the people of this country and not the disappointment you may have with our government. I have never had a vote in anything. I stand for freedom that the people have given to this country. You are the heroes, not the government. You are the ones that go to work every day. You do what is necessary to see that the children have shoes and clothes and plenty of food and an education. That is why I call you heroes. This is the spirit that I represent. This is why I was created as a constant reminder to the people of America that with pride in our country and a strong belief in God, we can overcome any obstacle that is put in our path. We are still the greatest country in the world. We are America. We are America. So the next time you pass by me, just give me a wink or allow a glimmer of pride or just a simple wave to let the soldiers that have died so they can live free and I can fly free will know that their sacrifice is not in vain. Signed, your flag. On June 14th every year, we celebrate the adoption of the U.S. national flag that was done in 1777. To those who have fought to defend the nation represented by the Stars and Stripes, this piece of cloth holds immense significance. For many citizens, our flag powerfully embodies the heritage and history of the United States. There's a lot of history about the flag as we know it today, but I want to just touch on a couple of highlights. It is generally accepted that George Washington asked Betsy Ross to make the first official flag that had been approved by the Continental Congress. There had never been an official one up to that point. The story goes that Washington, General Washington wanted stars on the flag with six points. As we know, the stars on the, on the flag have five points. 
because Betsy Ross convinced him that five was, was more attractive and also easier to make. The flag has changed many times. For instance, one version had 15 stripes and 15 stars, but they finally settled on 13 stripes and one star for each state. So every time we added a state, the flag changed. As the country grew, so did the, the movement to recognize the day the flag was authorized. Early on, most of the celebrations were just individual affairs. Bernard Seagrand, who was a school teacher in Wabaco, Wisconsin, reportedly spent years trying to get the Congress to approve Ju June 14th as a national holiday. Seagrand held a flag ceremony in the late 1800s, but was unsuccessful in getting the, a nationally recognized date. He may have been the first leader of an organized ceremony, just in our back door. I found that interesting. Both President Wilson in 1916 and President Coolidge in 1927 issued proclamations asking for June 14th to be observed as National Flag Day. But it wasn't until August 1949 that Congress approved the national observance and President Harry Truman signed it into law. In the Old Testament reading, Ginger read the word banner in Psalm 20. God's word speaks frequently of flags when they are used in their proper context. You might be surprised by how often the Bible mentions the topic, just under different names. Although the word flag is rarely used in most English transitions, scripture contains dozens of references to banners, standards, emblems, and they all mean flags. Flags in the Bible were often used to identify the tribes and families of Israel. As the Lord commanded, the children of Israel shall camp by their own standard, flag, beside the emblem of their father's house. These standards may have been made out of cloth like today's flags, or perhaps some were painted or engraved on wood and other materials. Whatever the case, their purpose was for identification of different groups. As we consider the flag and all it stands for, I'd like to consider today's theme, One Nation Under God. This simple phrase added to the Pledge of Allegiance over 50 years ago has been the source of debate and heated controversy. As this debate continues, some so-called experts have implied or concluded that the Founding Fathers and Patriots were not religious. The detractors, in an effort to further their own cause, have even painted these great men <clears throat> and women from our history as being devoid of religious passions or even a belief in God. This is part of their strategy to remove any discussion of God from the public forum. These men and women were passionate, uh, passionately religious and saw God all around them. To God, they gave thanks for his influence in founding this great nation. They turned to God for wisdom and strength when life and liberty hung in the balance. Certainly, the debate on separation of church and state will continue, but no one can dispute how our founding fathers and patriots felt about God. The record is clear. Here's a couple of quotes that I found from some of our leaders. Thomas Jefferson said, God who gave us life gave us liberty. And can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a convic conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are a gift from God? James Madison said, the belief in God is all powerful, wise, and good, it is so essential to the, the moral order of the world and to the happiness of man that arguments, arguments which enforce it can be drawn from so many, from too many sources. Their English back then was a little tough. This next one is even tougher from George Washington. Now, therefore, I recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all that is good, 
was good, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his care, kind care, and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interposition of his providence in the course and conclusion of the late war. That's a mouthful. I'd like to finish this, this tribute to, the, to Flag Day with a story about the Star Spangled Banner. In 1814, when the War of 1812 was still going on, the people of Maryland were in great trouble. The British fleet began to attack Baltimore. The enemy bombarded the forts, including Fort McHenry. For 24 hours, the terrific bombardment went on. If Fort McHenry only stands, the city is safe, said Francis Scott Key to a friend. And they gazed anxiously through the smoke to see if the flag was still flying. These two men were in the strangest place that could be imagined. They were in a little American vessel firmly attached to the side of the British Admiral's flagship. A Maryland doctor had been seized as a prisoner by the British and the president had given permission for them to go under the flag of truce to ask for his release. The British commander finally decided that the prisoner could be set free, but he was not about to allow the two men to go back to the city and carry any information. Until the attack on Baltimore is ended, you and your boat must remain here, he said. The firing continued. As long as daylight lasted, they could catch glimpses of the stars and stripes whenever the winds swayed the clouds of smoke. Then night came, and they could still see the banner now and then by the blaze of the cannon fire. A little after midnight, the firing stopped. The two men paced up and down the deck, straining their eyes to see if the flag was still flying. Can the fort have surrendered, they questioned. Oh, if morning would only come. At last, the, the faint gray of dawn appeared. They could see that a flag was flying, but they, it was too dark to tell which one. More and more eagerly, they gazed. It grew lighter, and a sudden breath of wind caught the flag and floated out on a, on a breeze. It was not an English flag. It was their own stars and stripes. The fort had stood. The city was safe. It was then that Francis Scott Key took out, a, out of his pocket an old letter, and on the back of it he wrote the poem, The Star-Spangled Banner. The British departed, and the little American boat went back to the city. Mr. Key gave a copy of the poem to his uncle, who had been helping to defend the fort. The uncle sent it, sent it to the printer and had it struck off on some handbills. Before the ink was dry, the printer picked up a copy and hurried to a restaurant where many patriots were assembled. Waving the paper, he said, listen to this, and he read the poem. Sing it, sing it, cried the whole company. And Charles Durang mounted a chair and for the first time sang the Star Spangled Banner. The fleet was out of sight even before the poem was printed. In the middle of the night, the Admiral had sent to the British soldiers this message, I can do nothing more. And they hurried on board the ships. It was not long before they left the Chesapeake Bay altogether, perhaps with a new song ringing in their ears as they went. I'm going to invite you to stand and we're going to sing the Star Spangled Banner. It'll be on the screen. And we're going to sing two verses, the first, what turns out to be the first, which we're familiar with, and the last verse. And I invite you to, to kind of pay attention to the words uh, in the last verse. And this is where you get to wave your flag again as you uh, sing the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs>
You may be seated. America was founded as a nation under God and has been looked up to by other nations for over 200 years. Unfortunately, other countries and some of our own citizens are disgruntled with America today. Even though our reputation has taken some hits, we're still a strong country with high ideals and proud people. There's a simple way you can show that to the world, by flying the flag. Every time you put a flag out, you're saying, I'm an American and proud of what this flag represents. The flag stands for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, for religious freedom, and for others, other rights that many nations lack. The flag represents our history and our goals for a better future for all. Flag Day is celebrated each year on June 14th. Fly your flag high. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Hear us as we pray for truth that shall make us all free. Teach us that liberty is not only to be loved, but also to be lived. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried in books. It costs too much to be hoarded. Help us see that liberty is not the right to do as we please, but the opportunity to please do what is right. Amen. And now is the time to uh, share our joys and concerns. Who has a joy? Barb. It's going to go out there. Right? There's a post right outside Henry Harbor corner right there. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Wilkie Library, it's a um, Wilkie Library that was founded in 's well, thanks for everybody that's put in a lot of hard work <laughs> other joys or concerns Prayers for their friend Paula, who uh, has had cancer come back in her eye. Connie. Oh. Prayers for the uh, premature granddaughter of the, uh, the Storer family.
So a joy that uh, he's making some slight improvements. Jack. Glenn. So prayers for uh, Melissa Morty, who uh, is in pretty serious condition, but is kind of stable. Uh, Wendy. <laughs> Patrick, remind us where you're going to college. And you're going to study. Talk to Glenn, he'll help you pick up chicks. <laughs> oh, that's an agricultural program. Yeah. Penny. So another graduate uh, this afternoon. So a great joy for your for your niece. That's fantastic. Do I see somebody here? Well, I'll add a joy for the Schuler family uh, performing uh, and sharing their musical talents with us today. Those horns were fantastic. Any other? Uh, Well, thank you very much. I invite you to be in a time of uh, silent prayer as we contemplate uh, our, uh, our request to God this morning. Psalm 33, verses 10 to 12 say the following. Blessed is the nation whose God is their Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. Please be in a spirit of prayer with me this morning. Dear God, please lift up our nation as we celebrate Flag Day. Pray for our military and each family, both past and present, for their sacrifices. Pray our flag will always stand for freedom in one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. Pray our flag will be honored around the world as the flag that represents this freedom and under the authority of Almighty God. Please lift up our elected officials as they make sound decisions based on the right thing to do. Lift up our educational system, the stock market, energy in America, the environment, young people of America, and their future. Lift up every prayer request sent to us, sickness, relatives in hospitals, families who have lost loved ones, relationships, loss of jobs, Christian persecution, and peace with justice. Oh God, you have heard our prayers today. We ask for healing of those that are sick and for everyone on our prayer chain. We seek safety for those that are in harm's way. We pray for those that are misjudged and misunderstood. We ask for safe passage for all who are traveling. We thank you for all who are celebrating the joys in their life, birthdays, anniversaries, births, children, grandchildren, and all celebrations. We pray for our pastor and his family and everyone in our congregation. 
we ask for discernment for all gathered at the Wisconsin Annual Conference. Thank you for our many blessings. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts with love and serenity as we join together to pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Living out our faith, uh, a few activities. Tai Chi on uh, Mondays and Fridays. Uh, if anybody is interested in information, you can talk to Ginger or I. Uh, we both participate. And there's some people here that uh, also do, uh, so I invite you to, uh, to come. Um, I don't know whether outreach is still collecting for this, but if, if not, you still can make donations to. Uh, is this still current? I mentioned peace with justice. Um, Well, you can read that, but in a little. Tim specifically asked that I, that I mention and make sure you understood there was an envelope to make a donation. So I encourage you to, uh, to consider. It's a reminder of the uh, summer walking program the meeting will be on Sunday, June the 28th, right after the worship service. So if you're interested, uh, you don't necessarily have to make a commitment that day, but come and find out what it's all about so you, uh, you can make an informed decision. Should be fun. In Vacation Bible School, the week of July 6th, um, there's still plenty of uh, space for kids to, uh, to sign up. Uh, and invite you to uh, encourage anybody who, who falls into that category. Also at the same time as a critter camp, a lot of fun, and there's a field trip involved uh, to, uh, to go and see nature at, at its best at River Edge. And with that, I invite you to uh, the, the <clears throat> the ushers to come forward and
Almighty God and Father of all, we praise you and give you thanks for the wonder of your gifts, freedom, justice, and peace. Grant us these virtues that we may be shining examples of your creation. We ask blessings upon our gifts that we have presented here today. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord let us fa his face shine upon us and be gracious to all. May the Lord look upon us kindly and give us his peace. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is, This is my song number 437. As we get ready to leave today, I want to thank everybody that uh, had something to do behind the scenes. Uh, thanks for the flowers. Thanks for the greeters. Thanks for the ushers. Thanks for the music. Patrick, thanks for uh, pushing the buttons. Uh, thanks, Glenn and Tiffany, for uh, coffee and whoever else I may have forgot. With that, I, uh, I, I offer the following blessing. Oh, God, we thank you for the flag of our country and for all that our flag represents. We thank you for giving victory to brave and valiant men and women who have given their last measure of strength in order that the flag might wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. We thank you for giving us the ideals of faith and liberty, for preserving the sanctity of our homes and freedom of worship. Lord God, you, may, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Hear us as we pray for truth that shall make us all free. As we leave this place today, teach us that liberty is not only to be loved, but to be lived. Liberty is too precious to be buried in books. Help us see that our liberty is not the right to do as we please, but the opportunity to please do what is right. Amen. And with that, we have... Um,